Welcome back to Bayona's RC World. In today's video, we're going to start right back on the Ultra Sport 1000. We are going to start building the wing. So sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and let's get started with this build. guys so we're gonna basically start the wing build of the ultra sport 1000 all right so i got my short medium and long spars right here so this is the short so these are the medium and these are the long all right so about two and a half inches from one of the ends all these will be tapered as you can see on the plan all right so they're going to be tapered and then they will be glued on top of each other like such all right so this will be one spar assembly like this in a nutshell with a taper all right and since I'm going to be doing the uh, clip wing version, um, we're just going to build the wing as intended. But when we get to this part here, we uh, before we start capping everything off, before we actually put the wing tip block and all, we will actually cut everything flush with the W12 rib. Alright, so what we're doing is we're preparing the um main spars all right Just looking through the main spar looking for any bowing and all that stuff making sure we try to get the best stock possible i mean we can only go as good as we can with what we got in the kit so, it is what it is. And what I'm doing here is I'm sandwiching it in between the two straight edge rulers to keep any deviations, you know, to keep it nice and straight while we um, glue the spar doublers and everything on top. Alright. That's all we're doing is just getting it all nice and straight so we can glue all these parts together. Just like that. And then we also got the top. It's gonna go on just like this. So as long as we keep the uh, spar straight during the gluing process, all will be okay. You know, we won't have the spars fighting each other type deal. 
if you're really concerned about that. Part, you'd be okay. All right, so we got two, two main spars done. Basically, if I take these two apart, you got one set left and one set right wing. All right, let's go verify instructions and continue on. All right, so now we got to prepare the uh, landing gear configuration here. <clears throat> All right, so. As you can see, we got um, we got the tail dragger, fixed gear tail dragger. We also got the tricycle gear, and we also got retracts. All right, so you got to choose which one you're gonna go with. Um, I do like the tricycle gear, however, that will also limit your prop size as well. Um, the tail dragger i don't know i just like tail draggers and of course i would love to have retracts but um like i said we're just gonna go standard on this one because um i got other aircrafts that requires retracts and retracts are not cheap especially if you're not trying to go cheap you know i, I don't want to go i don't want to skimp on um on retracts or engines all right so I got uh, rib number two three and four and you will notice they have cutouts they're not completely cut through to the other side all right so you would actually have to figure out what configuration of landing gear you're going to utilize and then um, tailor your ribs accordingly all right so if you are going to do the tricycle landing gear you will basically cut out these rear tabs if you are going to do the uh, fixed tail dragger you would basically cut out these three tabs and if you're going to do retracts then you don't cut any tabs off simple as that so we're going to eliminate this portion here because we're going to be doing the fixed gear tail dragger. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. All right. So we're going to cut this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just put my exacto blade where the score marks are at. Right? And finish the job. Now we gotta see where that's at. That's one.
two. So we did that. All right. This is for the tail dragger configuration. Fixed gear. I don't know it does that. So the doublers will also need to get cut out as well. All right. And so What's that? Just give this a quick 
sanding to clean off all those excess flashing. reshaping any of these ribs or doublers all right we're just taking off all the flashing as simple as that all right that's done now there's also mind before you start gluing make sure you verify your plans also to ensure the right direction of your doublers to the spar per wing side all right so this one in particular if you're looking for at it from the front leading edge as you can see we got from the wing root area, right? We got rib, rib number one, rib two, doubler in the inside, hitting towards the wing tip. W3, doubler, also facing towards the wing tip. And then you got W4 uh, rib with the uh, doubler. The doubler now is facing towards the wing root, all right? so. You got the two doublers on the outside facing in, the one in the middle facing towards the wing tip. Okay. So when you do for the opposite side of the wing, like this set right here, all right? So we'll go W2, W3, W4 because this is the orientation of the ribs for the left hand side, all right? And so since W2 is inside, we will take W2 doubler, and that will go like that on the other wing. W3 also faces wing tip, and then W4 faces wing root. All right, so it's going to go just like that for the other wing all right so make sure that you double check the location of your uh, rib doublers you're not really gonna see it on the right hand wing panel so you're gonna have to pull out your left hand side or left hand wing panel uh, plans and if you're gonna do the fixed tail dragger uh, version landing gear you will see the on the left hand side plan you will see the actual location of the block and also all these doublers and stuff all right the right hand side wing panel uh shows the retractable landing gear details well, we're just gonna go ahead and mop things up here real quick get everything all situated
all right guys so I got the uh, right hand side wing panel pretty much all built up all we need to do is sheet the bottom side and take care of like the aileron and the wing tips and all that other stuff but right now step 18 all right I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, clipped wing version all right so that right there is gonna go from 80 inches to 74 inches all right so according to this the original 74 inch wingspan uh, Ultra Sport 1000 flew exceptionally well and um, them increasing the wingspan to 80 inches so that it can fly in IMAA legal events was the only reason for that and they said it flies it flies great but uh, I don't know you know you only got one shot at this right so I'm gonna go ahead and do the clip wing version back now I mean we still can turn back but I ain't turning back man. go ahead and finish up the cap strip on this side here wherever that went I already had pre-cut the cap strip here and this one's gonna go right here and then we can basically sand all this nice and flush awesome stuff all right Looks good to me. Alright. Okay, okay, okay. Go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on these areas here and kind of got loose. and just add some glue to all the joints here just to make sure it's nice and strong
put a little bit of CA here on the cap strip tips. off my uh, wing jig here because we're going to have to switch over to the uh, left wing and get that all built up all right so this one here I'm not really doing a you know like a real how-to type deal you know it's just I'm just building it and Hope you guys find some entertainment on here, you know, in regards to the build. If not, then, you know, it is what it is. <sighs> All right. I'm going to have to uh, put this down as well. Put the wing jig there when we do the bottom side here. So, you know I can never wait. Always got to try something, right? Eh? Oh, yeah. That's going to be a pretty nice size. This leading edge stock is completely hay bonkers as you can see it is no longer straight from here to here it's crooked that way and it's also bowing the other way like that therefore I don't have access to any of these type of balsa woods here on the island of Guam so um, when I have to to see what I could do to get some balsa wood over here um, but in the meantime what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drench this uh, soak this thing up really good I'm gonna clamp it between my two straight edge straight straight edge rulers and um, leave it overnight to dry as you can see the edge of this uh, tabletop right here that's all straight from here you can see where it completely goes off all right so i need to bring this side straight and then hopefully with the weight put down on here it will kind of you know get everything all nice and straight yeah i mean it is what it is i'm going to be utilizing you know the vast majority of it so i have to figure out something there's no way i could get this type of stock here on the island of guam all right so it's pretty much what i'm doing right now i got the whole length of this aileron stock soaked in hot water then i wiped it off and now it's being clamped in between the two straight edge rulers all right, well this one right here is just just to confirm everything but other than that it's really just being clamped onto that but it is straight now to include the bowing so we're just gonna allow this to dry completely thoroughly all the way to the inside because I soaked this really well so we will see and um once it's completely dry and i pull it off and it holds then awesome but if it doesn't and it still bowls a little bit then um we will go into the uh other woodworking techniques oh 
all that is needed for this particular wing is the center piece, the center sheeting, which you can't do until you um, join both wing halves together. All right. So until the other wing is built up and joined, then we can go ahead and finish center sheeting the uh, center piece. However, we got pretty much everything else all done to include the uh, wingtip block, which is not final sanded yet, but just final, uh, I mean, just sanded to shape based off of the, um, the airfoil. Okay. And yeah, so that is pretty much the right wing. Still gotta do some final sanding. And then eventually we gotta taper the aileron. All right. But yep, there you go. Cool. All right, so we got the left wing panel on the building board at the moment. We already got the main spar, training edge, leading edge, and the ribs basically installed and glued. All right, I did not record the whole beginning portion of this, but I'm just gonna run you right through what we did so far. First, we basically prepared four main spars, and this is built up with three pieces. Um, we got your small, medium, and large portion of your spar we glue that tapered the short and the medium down as you can see right here all right and from here we made four of these and so we got your main spar cross pin over the plan and then from there we prepared the ribs all right there's three different configuration for landing gear for this particular model and I chose to go with the tail dragger there is also the retract version and also the tricycle landing gear. Uh, there's different ways to um, uh, prepare ribs two, three, and four for the three different um, landing gear configurations. So look through the manual, look through your plans for the respective uh, landing gear that you decide to choose. Uh, so with that said, I did the tail dragger version. So I prepared the ribs two, three, and four to accommodate the landing gear block. All right. And so from there, we went ahead and uh, beveled, or kind of like beveled, based on the um, the guide here. We cut a bevel on the leading edge and training edge for rib number one to allow it to uh, to give that uh, that slight uh, angle, right? Then from there, we started adding the ribs from rib one all the way to rib 13. Added the training edge and also the training edge um, guide right on the bottom of this. This is what the training edge is laying on right now. It's what's gonna keep this whole wing um, nice and straight, all right? That's your, basically your jig. All right, so we're just popping it down on there onto the ribs making sure that it's really down in there all right and once we uh get that all established we're going to take the uh dihedral gauge put it back on rib number one and ensure that we did not move this right and to ensure that we're still at the proper dihedral angle on rib number one and so we're just going to go ahead and push all this down and you can go back through each rib if you want and verify it's trueness make sure it's 90 degrees to the building surface just double checking everything because you want to build as true and straight as possible all right all right so far so good everything is still 90 degrees And I'm not too worried about rib number 13 because 
technically this bay here is going to get cut out because I'm doing the clipped wing version for the 74 inch wingspan. Um, currently right now, up to rib number 13, this will be considered your 80 inch wingspan version. All right. And so from here, we're just going to go ahead and ensure, like I said, every, the rib, these main spore is actually pushed all the way down and it's actually engaged and touching the tops of each rib. All right. And from here, we're going to basically glue it down. I'm just using thin CA here. I'm just going to put a drop in each area just to, just to hold it down for now. Then we'll go back with some medium CA later on and just reinforce these joints. got my finger stuck all right we'll finish this up over here all right and then from here next thing to do is your shear webs all right so we're gonna basically take the shear webs here and we are going to basically just fit it in between every single bay, the backside here, all right? We're not gonna do in between bays one and bays two at the current time. We're gonna wait until both wing panels are glued together. Then we're gonna saw this portion about one eighth to allow for the dihedral brace to get epoxy behind the spar, all right? So from here is pretty much your shear webs. And we're just gonna go ahead and go through each bay. We're gonna measure and cut, trim, and all that stuff and get it all prepared. Now, your shear web doesn't have to actually touch rib to rib. I'm, uh, excuse me, yeah, rib to rib. As long as it is glued top and bottom of the main spar and it's uh, glued in there really good, all right? But it doesn't have to touch or get glued to each rib, all right? However, the closer it gets here, like right now, um, yeah, I could trim this, get this shear web to actually touch each rib, which is no big deal. Like this right here, it's a perfect fit. And then everything else, we're just gonna have to trim. This one's a good fit. All right, so all this is going to get shear webs all up in here. And in this case here, we're going to have to remove some of the um, uh, cross pins in these certain areas just so that we can go ahead and uh, get the shear web in there. All right, so all that. So every single bay is going to get a shear web. Alright. We got this one right here. We got this one right here. And we still got one for this guy right here. For later. We got the training edge sheeted, leaning edge sheeted, and all the shear webs installed. So we're just waiting for this to basically dry up so we can uh, remove this. Well, before we do that, we're going to start putting the cap strips on the, uh, the ribs. And then when we're done with that, we can remove this, flip it over, and start on the bottom side of the wing. And uh, there's really nothing to this. This build is so simple. It's like one of the most basic, you know, builds out there. Uh, based on what I've seen and witnessed so far. Um, if you built the um, 40 size kit or 60 size kit, it's uh, pretty similar to, uh, to that, just bigger pieces. But anywho, this is the uh, right hand side wing and what's on the table right now is the left. 
and yeah so cap strips and then we got to add the um, landing gear block itself and some other doohickeys here like the sheeting the server uh, rail and all that stuff and then this wing the left hand side wing should be done in no time uh, so far I got about an hour of work into it and uh, I say about another hour and this thing will be complete uh, I can basically start um, gluing the two wing halves together and get the centerpiece sheeted and get it ready for installation on the fuselage so that I can get the fuselage all built up. And once that's done, I'm telling you, we'll be covering in no time. Now this wing is going to be a total of 74 inches with both wing panels glued together with the wing tips and all. Alright. And so from here, we will eventually sand all this nice and flush with rib number 12. And sand all the root ends nice and flush. And then we'll start doing the um, landing gear uh, blocks and all that, getting that all situated. And once we're done with that, we can then glue in the aileron rail. And then we'll just sheet the training edge, sheet the leaning edge, and then sheet the aileron portion, cut that open. And then we'll combine or oh, glue the uh, training edge aileron um, the training edge areas the tapered stock and then the block I mean that's how much more is left on this left hand side wing which is not much and sooner or later it's gonna look exactly like the right hand side um, all done up and that much closer to joining these two halves together to make one full wing. All right, so I measured out the slot here, all right, for the sheeting for the uh, landing gear block. I went ahead and I glued, I CA the leading edge of the sheeting onto the actual leading edge itself. And then we're gonna soak this sheeting a tap bit just so that it's a little bit more pliable and we don't induce any cracking uh, throughout the sheeting All right but as you can see where it drops right on over all right and then this gets all pushed in and yeah we should be good to go
we're done with the aileron. And now we're gonna go ahead and uh, open up the hole for the aileron servo. And I just got a, I got an old high tech servo that, you know, broken, and I decided it's burnt out. So this is what I use to mock up all my stuff. And so we're gonna utilize the marks that we made earlier prior to sheeting. And this is going to it's gonna give us an idea of where our opening is gonna be relative to the sheeting. So we're just gonna mark it out just like this. right about here and then we also got this part right here this will give us the length and that will be the opening all right and we'll just cut it out with the exacto blade and just like that we cut it open Got the servo installed there. Just mocking it up. Alright. All right. Moving on. Moving on. And so from here, we're going to add um, the cap strips. We're not going to add cap strips here because this whole section here gets sheeted. So we're going to be doing cap strips right from rib number five, rib number eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. All right, so let's get that uh, going on here. guys so we got pretty much the center or the ring wing root here pretty much all C8 it's basically thin C8 all up in here and then from here we're gonna cut the rib number one open so that we can go ahead and put the uh, dihedral brace in there uh, once I can find out oh, over there Alright, so what I'm going to do here is just, just going to sand a little bit of this um, joint there, well, all the CA. First things first, we're going to mark the thickness that we need to cut out of W1 rib. Put this to the side. All right. And so we're going to cut straight down, all the way down. So that um, our dihedral brace can get placed down in there. Right. Let's 
soon. Just gonna put it like that. More. On that side. can cut down this thing. Okay. Just take your time. Take your time. Do it right. Also has little marks here, and these marks is for the wing doll. The wing dolls are gonna go through here, so marking. They got little indentations there, and it's gonna be drilled out with a 5/16 drill bit.
I drilled out my holes for the uh, wing dowels for the front all right so I got that one all situated in there and um, yeah well since I had made um, I built the fuselage portion first unfortunately I had f2a already glued on there so what I did was I just popped the wing in there let it sit on the saddle and then I just marked it out through the holes up front and went ahead and drilled it out and so the dowel goes through the wing leading edge and it comes out through the back side right about there on both sides here and then now I can go ahead and sheet this right I can sheet this whole bottom side after I route some wire or some uh, string from the aileron bay all the way through the center for W1. I'm gonna make a little notch right here, about half inch behind the uh, main spar. And I'm gonna make a little indentation, like a little uh, half moon, enough for the servo leads to go through. And I'm gonna put the hole right above this form, uh, this uh, rib here, uh, our W1. All right, so. That's what I'm going to do and uh, went ahead and I filled in the um, landing gear block, the areas that uh, are not going to be utilized 
so the wire will go from here out and then out from right about there So what we got to do from here is we need to reinforce the center uh, portion of the wing uh, with some fiberglass. And this fiberglass is the uh, cloth that came with the kit. I don't really know what weight this is, but it's, uh, it's a pretty thick. It's probably like the cloth that you get from uh, like Home Depot and stuff like that, you know, for the marine uh, uh, boats and stuff. but. Uh, it's pretty thick weight, um, thick cloth to me, so I'm not really too sure what the weight is on this one. But uh, we basically took that 30 inch length, cut that into two, and it's roughly about 18 inches. And we're going to uh, basically glass from the training edge. We're not going to wrap around the training edge. We're just going to start at the training edge. I'm going to go a little bit over, and then we're going to trim it. But mainly the glass is going to come up wrap around the leading edge on top and bottom of this wing so with the bottom and then also on the top all right now once we get that pretty much done and the uh glass is dried and all that we'll just basically sand it smooth and all and then from there we can go ahead and add the uh, wing bolt plate which will be glued to the bottom portion of the wing and once we're done with that, we can install the uh, the two dolls from in front of the leaning edge going into the actual main spar, the main spar joiner, epoxy that in, and uh, we can basically final sand the wing tips and all that, final sand the wing, but we're going to final sand later uh, when it's coming close to actual covering the uh, aircraft. But, uh, yep, and then also... We also got to bevel and hinge the ailerons. But other than that, uh, we can press on from here after we do all this. We can press on to the fuselage and get this thing all built up. Um, so I'm looking about another day or so. And this whole Ultra Sport 1000 will be completely framed up, built. And we'll just need to get it covered, install the electronics, the engine, and go do the CG, go made it. All right, so looking forward to that. So stay tuned, sit back, relax, and let's get on with the actual finishing of this wing. All right, so I'm going to utilize some Zap Z Epoxy finishing resin to go ahead and apply this fiberglass cloth to the center portion of this wing. But prior to doing that as well, I'm going to go ahead and tape off uh, the area at least about about one eighth or so away from the actual center line or not the center line but uh from the center out it's roughly about two inches so from here to here two inches all right and so right at my two inch mark i'm gonna go about about one eighth out from there and all that's going to do is prevent a lot of uh, excess resin from going that way. Alright, that's all that's for.
make sure the front is not crooked. tape right here in the bottom portion or should I say top portion of the wing just to prevent any excess resin from going in unwanted areas this away from here. That. So we're going to go ahead and uh, mix up some epoxy resin. Now, we are not using this glass for a painted surface. This glass is actually there for strength. Alright, so... I'm not too worried about saturation coat and all that other stuff I mean we're gonna saturate it that's for sure we're gonna make sure it's saturated and that uh, the resin is gonna penetrate that wood now I know a lot of people gonna say why don't you put some resin down first and then put the glass on top then put some more resin oh, I could do that too but I like it where the glass is at right now. at the moment. If I were to put resin and then put, try to put the glass down and I need to manipulate it, sometimes it starts pulling the, the, the edges of the glass and starts fraying and all that stuff. So it's the reason why I don't do that. Um, if you're careful, you probably could get, get away with it. If you, you know, you can lay that glass down pretty good and straight right from the get go, but more than likely that's not me. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it on there on its mark, then I'm going to apply the resin, and I'm just going to uh, spread it all around. It's going to get saturated, the, the weave is going to get saturated. I'm going to put a little pressure, then this uh, resin is going to, be going to um, embed itself into the wood as well, and provide strength in combination of the good mechanical 
bond between the wood, the resin, and the glass. Keep the glass straight as you can see how the glass changes color, almost becomes translucent, transparent type deal, and that's when you know the um, resin has really penetrated that glass, saturating it. So right now I'm not being you know, I'm not trying to uh, eliminate as much resin as I can um, at this point. Right now, it's all about just getting this cloth soaked and penetrating that wood there. Because this is supposed to add strength to the center portion of this wing. Saturated. We don't want to see any white on the fiberglass. Make sure it's all almost see through, if not see through itself. Go all the way to the edge. We're not wrapping the bottom or the training edge, that's for sure. So I'm not too worried about that.
this is going to sand pretty nicely as well. That way the covering material would also go on this thing really well. Which will be using Monaco. side here. Pressing in that, pressing in the uh, resin, some pressure to ensure it really embeds into that wood. front here. We are wrapping it around the front. So we'll get some resin there. You gotta be mindful of my dowel holes that are there. Some of that resin will go in there because I don't got it blocked off. But I'm not worried about it because we could just drill that out. Bring it out a little bit more. it guys Just getting this front piece saturated as well there you go that's pretty much all I need to do I believe we're good let's see I could probably move this well, that's a big fly. I got a fly in the shot. All right. Just like that. So we got the uh, center portion of the wing glassed for strength. All right. And we're utilizing the glass that came with the kit. Really uh, thick weight. But yep. Yeah. So we got that centerpiece glass all the way to the front. All right. I got tape down there so it prevents the resin from going into the uh, opposite side where we end up having to do a lot of cleaning in other words a lot of sanding so from here we can just basically just trim it off from the tape line 
and I taped off the area we got a little resin going you know bridging the glass to the wood where it's gonna when you remove the tape and you start sanding that resin into the glass you give it a nice uh, transition between wood and glass that way the monocoat will be seamless but not to worry about the bottom side because there's gonna be a belly pan thing that get gets constructed underneath there so all that will be hidden anywho so uh yeah you're not gonna see that all right guys so this completes this portion of the build the next video we will be attaching the wing onto the fuselage and getting that complete all right so, so i'll see you in the next video Shit. Shit.